Welcome back, guys. Today is an excellent day because the sun is shining, you're here, and we're melting some metal. Now, in yesterday's video, I showed you how to make this thing. This is our trash can metal foundry that's just lined with kaol wool. And as you might remember, it gets very, very hot. So today, we're going to put it to good use. Now, I still have quite a few of the brass ingots left from our brass knuckles project, but what I am short on right now is aluminum. You can see from my mini master swords and my failed pokeball attempts, all of my aluminum is used up in failed castings. Now, I personally love the different looks of these metals, but it does make me wonder what kind of result they would form if we mix the two together. So the first step is to remelt this aluminum and cast new mini metal biscuits. You can't see the flames out here, but it's definitely getting hot. Infrared technology. That's way cool. I like that. It's getting toasty. That's a big crucible. It takes a while to bring it up to temperature. Oh yeah, it's starting to melt. Our aluminum has melted, so let's skim the slag off the top and pour it in our muffin tray. Oh wow, that's gorgeous. There's a lot of slag on the top there. That all needs to come out. That's no good to us anymore. It's all aluminum oxide. But everything underneath that is really good molten aluminum. This might be super hot. All right, one successful transfer. Going through the pour. Ooh, that's hot. That really is hot and slippery. It's starting to burn. <laughs> what happens if we take molten aluminum and pour it into a crucible that's cold? Will it crack? Here we go. All right, cool. The transfer's been made. Now we can take this one and pour it a little bit more evenly. Hot stuff. Whew. These aluminum muffins are extremely hot right now, so I got a little bit of water to cool them down. to liquefy aluminum and liquefy brass and mix the two liquids together to form a new type of metal? I'm no metallurgist, but I am interested to see what happens. So let's fire these things up and put them to the test. I just finished warming up our small crucible and we've got our new aluminum muffins ready to go. So let's go ahead and mix them with the brass. Our first test is one aluminum muffin and one equivalent size brass muffin. How will these look once they're meshed together? Let's go find out. Our brass is just melted and you can tell that because the zinc is starting to oxidize and burn off. That's what the yellow is and that's what all these vapors are coming out. So it probably means it's melted and ready for pouring. Wow. The zinc is burning. It's on fire. Yikes. It's actually glowing. Okay, so our liquid is actually burning. Let's go ahead and take that out. Surprisingly, we almost got two biscuits back out of it. Amazing. So quick update guys, you might remember that brass is actually a mixture of zinc and copper, and zinc has a relatively low boiling point. So this stuff got so hot, the zinc started boiling out of the mixture. It actually gets hot enough that it can burn and combines with the oxygen in the air to form zinc oxide, which is the long stringy stuff. And it leaves behind this yellow residue. That's why in previous projects, I've used a flux like ant and roach killer because that suppresses the oxygen and keeps the zinc in the material. In any case, we've got this stuff poured and we did come out with nearly two full muffins, which should be a near 50-50 ratio of aluminum and brass. Okay, let's knock these things out and give them a bath. That one's a little bit hotter than the last. Look at that, it 
got so hot it just cracked the glass and the water's leaking. That's interesting. Oh yeah, there's a big split on the bottom now as well. Okay, well after all the abuse we've put this through, I think this is just about done. This is kind of interesting. I accidentally dropped one of these 50-50 mixes on the concrete and it shattered into about seven different pieces. Now this stuff is extremely shiny. It's got a really cool metallic tinge to it, but apparently the stuff's really brittle as well. Really great for looks, not great for durability. Oh wow, it's shattered everywhere. Better not drop the other one. Oh, that's pretty though, not gonna lie. That's gorgeous. Wild. 50-50 aluminum and brass. Gorgeous. That's super cool, super shiny. Guys broke it. That's beautiful. Experiment number two, three parts aluminum, one part brass. Let's go. Toasty hasn't burst into flames yet. That's a good sign. Oh, <laughs> I spoke too soon. Wow. Like spit out half our mix all over the place. all we're gonna get. We put in four, we only got out two, and that's because when I took the lid off and the air got to it, it exploded and splattered metal everywhere. So, things to watch out for when you're casting with brass. Whew, the water's hot, dang. For our third and final experiment, we've got three parts brass, one part aluminum. Cool. All right, is it going to explode in my face? Hopefully not. Cool, we're halfway there. Four went in, three and a half came out. Not too bad. Interesting how it changed different colors up there. It's got kind of like purple, magenta tinges on top. We're knocking them out. Oh, that's about right out. Couldn't be easier. Look at those things, they're kind of pretty. Oh wow, look at the bottom. We got teal blue. We got all different colors of the rainbow here. We got blues, greens, a little bit of yellow, some purple, magenta, rainbow biscuits. That's pretty cool. That's probably why the glass cracked. It cracked from the bottom. What happens if I drip a little water on it? For now, I'm gonna see if we can buff these things up a little bit. Guys, our castings are complete and we got some really cool different metallic colors of the rainbow. Unfortunately, I dropped the 50-50 mix on the concrete and it shattered into a bazillion pieces, showing that this composition is a little bit brittle. But if you look really close at the crystalline structure on the inside, it's very, very shiny, very pretty. Actually, it's absolutely gorgeous is what it is. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you look closely at the different compositions of the metals we've just casted, you see a wide array in the color change as we go from the top to the bottom. Starting at the top, we've got 100% brass, then 75% brass, 25% aluminum. Our 50-50 mix looks pretty cool, but it's in a bazillion pieces. Down here, we've got 75% aluminum with 25 brass, and on the bottom, 100% aluminum. If you weren't aware of this already, there's a huge weight difference between aluminum and brass. The brass is about three times heavier than the aluminum. And if I compare the aluminum biscuit with the one that's only got 25% brass, I can already feel a noticeable weight difference. 
rose gold. Of course, 75% brass is even heavier, but what I love about this is if you look at the coloration, it's almost got kind of a rose gold tinge to it. It's not the bright, shiny yellow color we're used to seeing in brass. It's more of a rose gold color instead. It's got more of a pinkish purple hue to it. It's very cool and very pretty, and this is probably one of my favorites. Now, as far as durability is concerned, we already know that the 50-50 mix is very, very fragile. But I went ahead and smash tested the other ones and got some surprising results. I went through each of these alloys with a hammer and smashed them with a good amount of power, and all of them stayed intact. Except for the rose gold, I had a little bit of chipping and one of them actually did break in half. But other than that, they all held together. So it's kind of interesting to see that 100% brass is very, very resilient, but once you start mixing in aluminum, it becomes very brittle. So cool experiments, guys, and let's quickly recap what we just learned here today. We took nuggets of aluminum and brass and we melted them down and mixed them in a 50-50 ratio. That made a new metallic composition that was extremely brittle but very, very pretty and we were able to smash it down into a powder. Next, we tried mixing 75% aluminum and 25% copper, and we got a nugget that was very, very similar to the aluminum itself, just a little darker in color and a little bit heavier. And finally, we tried 75% copper and 25% aluminum, which gave us a really cool rose gold looking nugget. These are some of my favorites because they look really cool, but they're still a little brittle, and I was able to smash one in half. We also saw that hot molten brass is extremely sensitive to the air, making it burst into flames and sometimes explode, making a mess all over your sidewalk. So what happens when you try mixing brass with aluminum? You get a wide array of new metallic compositions, each with their own personality. Thanks for joining me for this video, guys. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. Oh, that gouged the concrete. And this thing is still intact. Sweet. Let's hit it again. Wow, that is hard. This one didn't really do that. <laughs>